Hi, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at Naviate structure for the management and numbering of piles. We'll begin by writing the easting, northing and cutoff level for each pile. We'll then number the piles sequentially. We'll then have a look at some checking tools where we can actually check diameters and depths and so on. And finally we'll actually look at the piling schedule and then write that out to Microsoft Excel. So let's begin by placing in the pile coordinates. So here you can see that we have a simple button here to update the pile coordinates. If I do this, you'll then see that the coordinates are written into each pile. So checking this, I can select a pile. And now in the properties palette, you can see that we've got setting out point easting, northing, and also the level. Let's now number up the piles. So to do this, we'll switch to a piling plan. In the plan here, you can see that some of the piles are actually nested into pile caps. And some of them here are singular piles that are actually hosted into things like ground beams or foundation slabs. We're now going to actually use Naviate to sequentially number all of the piles within this project. To do this, we'll select the Naviate Structure tab, and then we'll go ahead and select Pile Numbering. I can see from the Pile Numbering dialog box that we have 404 piles currently in the project. So what I'm going to do here is set the padding to 3. I've got a prefix of P and I'm going to start numbering these piles from pile number one. You'll also notice here that I'm subdividing the piles by their host. So what that means is the numbering would actually be sequential around each of the piles in the host itself. And finally, the numbering system will go horizontal and then vertical. And here I'm going to have the numbering start in the bottom left of the project. We can now click OK to actually number up all of those piles. You can now see that the pile numbering is done, so actually if we just take a quick look at the log, we can actually see each pile and the number that it's been given. Of course, now if we actually look into the project itself, we can now see that pile numbering on the planes. So you'll notice here that each of the piles are grouped, so we've got pile 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But more importantly, if we come into some of the bigger piles in here, you'll see that all of the numbers are sequentially grouped according to their host, in this case the pile cap. And of course, if I look at the loose piles that are placed into the foundation slab, again, you can see that Naviate has sensibly numbered up those according to their host. Let's now take a look at the piling schedule. So here, we'll select the piling schedule. And straight away here, we can actually now see that we've got the pile number added in here. We've got the pile type, the actual cutoff level, the diameter of each of the piles here, the tow level, and of course here, the easting and northing. Now it's quite likely that I'd want to actually write this out to Microsoft Excel, perhaps to hand over to the piling contractor or someone like that. So what we can do here is select the Accelerate tab, and here you can see I've got Import Export to Excel. So here I could export a selection, or in this case I'm going to export a schedule. I could actually export this for a re-import, so I could allow the piling contractor to put in some additional values and then re-import it back in. But in this case I'm just going to export this out as an Excel file, and then click Export here. We'll save this onto our file system and we'll give it a name. And now you can see that Naviate's written to the file and now we'll just open this up just so we can actually have a look in Excel. And now of course we can see all the information written into the Excel file. Okay, so finally here, we'll actually go ahead and check the 3D view. So we'll go into the 3D view again and now we're going to use color elements to check things like pile levels, pile diameters and so on. So with the colour elements tool, I can select the category that I'm interested in, and then I can choose either an instance or a type parameter. So in this case here, I want to check the instance parameters, and then here I'll actually go ahead and start by selecting elevation at top. So now I can actually see the levels of each pile, and of course the pile caps. Now this is a very easy way of actually checking that you've got the correct levels on all of the piles. Another thing we'll do here is we'll actually check the pile diameters as well. Again, I can find my instance parameter, and now we can see we've only got three colours here, and you can see I've got 750 piles, 600 and 450. If it transpires that some of these were actually wrong, I could say show elements in the properties palette, and of course here, I could actually make a change if I wanted to. So that's again very, very useful. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.